Hi everyone, welcome back to the episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmielkoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute. And today's question is, should creatine be supplemented for prevention and treatment of concussions? And uh, I wanna say, yes, it should be right away. But before we get into concussions per se, I wanna say that I'm a big proponent of creatine for multiple reasons. First, there's a lot of evidence that creatine can help uh, those in chronic stress because creatine is this molecule that gives quick energy to cells, especially cells in the brain. Creatine um, as, is traditionally known as the uh, compound that's going to help with building and recovering, build, building muscles and recovery of uh, strength training and hypertrophy training for muscles. And then creatine has also been shown to improve um, elderly, basically elderly issues, whether that be a loss of tone and muscle tone leading to fatigue and possibly falls leading to fractures. Um, also bone mass, so people are the elderly with osteoporosis or osteopenia should be taking creatine as well. Um, creatine is one of those molecules that you get by eating a lot of meat. You, um, you can get about five grams of creatine by eating a pound of meat per day. Um, five grams is a typical dose for the average person. Obviously, some people are smaller, some people are bigger, but um, that's kind of the variety. So if you can get a pound of meat a day, you may not need to take creatine uh, as a supplementation. But if we get into this question of creatine specifically for concussion prevention, um, I think that all athletes should be, all athletes, especially in contact and collision sports, should be taking creatine preventively um, in their sport to prevent concussions. And if a concussion does occur, the benefits of creatine will already be in there stored within the brain. Um, the thing with creatine is that it may take time to get up into the brain. It may take about a month to two months to fully saturate the brain because at first, a lot of the creatine is gonna be going to be stored in the muscles. So we want to start creatine supplementation early as a prevention. Um, another good thing about creatine is it is very cheap. And so because it's very cheap, it shouldn't be that hard to, to supplement with. And it's one of those like easy things that everybody can do uh, for especially athletes for concussion prevention. So if we get into the paper, um, this paper is in the Journal of Concussion. It's called Potential Use of Creatine Supplementation Following Mild Traumatic Brain Injury. Um, the article is from 2017. Um, it talks about here that there is significant overlap between neuropathology of mild traumatic brain injury and the cellular role of creatine. Um, basically, consistent with creatine cellular role, supplementation reduced neuronal damage, protected against the effects of cellular energy crisis, and improved cognitive somatic symptoms, cognitive and somatic symptoms. Um, and this is a lot of the research that is on creatine, mostly in rats, um, but there are some in humans. And so. In particular, slow neural uptake of creatine may mean that the greater effects are achieved with preemptive supplementation for at-risk groups. That's what I was just saying about prevention. We should be taking it before the concussion first. Um, as we get into the paper, just showing that even though creatine supplementation is typically used for increasing muscle function and strength, um, the cognitive enhancement in non-clinical groups has been really investigated lately. Its potential role for neuroprotective uh, like reducing damage and alleviating symptoms in neurological diseases and brain injury has also been seen. Um, they're also talking about possibly could be aiding in neurodevelopmental, psychiatric, and acquired injury as well. So let's just go to the picture here, that or the diagram that shows how creatine can be beneficial um, for brain injury. So at the top of this diagram, we have a mild traumatic brain injury it can cause focal injury and cause diffuse injury. So focal injury being right where um, the impact or the, uh, the twisting of the axons where that occurs versus diffuse injury being more like widespread inflammation. And so focal injury leads to vascular damage, vascular damage leads to inflammation, edema, and decreased cerebral blood flow, which can lead to decreased cerebral blood flow leads to lack of oxygen to the cells, lack of oxygen means that the cell can't maintain its homeostasis, maintain its uh, proper functioning, which then leads to what's called increased calcium and 
increased calcium inside the cell causes apoptosis or another form of that is cellular death. So uh, a lack of oxygen leads to cellular death um, or dysfunction. Um, diffuse injury again also causes ionic flux, causes some axonal swelling, causes this glutamate release, which glutamate release just causes this uh, spreading depression it's called or um, this excitotoxicity of the cells and excitotoxicity then leads to again cellular death. So just looking at this part, this the part of the diagram, we know that creatine, uh, because it's this like quick form of energy, it's like ATP. ATP is the natural currency or the energy currency of most cells. Creatine is smaller and can be used quicker and regenerated faster than ATP. And so it is a great form of quick energy. So it can help with decreasing edema, decreasing neuroinflammation. At the same time, when we go down here, uh, this diagram is kind of messy, but if we look in the center, the dysfunctional mitochondria. So what happens after a concussion uh, or a mild traumatic brain injury, you have a dysfunctional mitochondria. Basically, you're, um, you're not having good oxidation reduction pathways that are forming, or it's called um, oxidative phosphorylation, that is forming ATP, that energy currency. So energy goes down, the ATP goes down. And at the same time, these pathways like glycolysis um, have to go up because the mitochondria, if it's not making ATP well, then pathways outside of the mitochondria like glycolysis, which uses glucose for energy, goes up. And that leads to lactic acid and lactic acid buildup leads to more inflammation. Um, and again, dysfunctional mitochondria also leads to that increased calcium. Uh, and increased calcium can lead to apoptosis or cellular death. So what happens here is creatine can help to uh, decrease the reactive oxygen species that's caused by dysfunctional mitochondria, decrease this membrane polarization that leads to the cell death from that calcium. Creatine here can also help, it's more efficient way of making ATP, um, or basically, let's go back here. So creatine turns into phosphocreatine. Phosphocreatine is the is the actual energy form of creatine. And so it's a more efficient way of making energy by ATP releasing some of its energy to creatine to make phosphocreatine. And then phosphocreatine, because it's faster, can go and help supply ATP um, at other areas of the cell. Um, and therefore, you don't need, the, when the dysfunctional mitochondria are occurring, uh, we have a quick source of energy already built up from creatine. Um, and then lastly, again, uh, the ATP pump, basically an increased calcium leads to this ionic flux, degrading axon structure, and leads to cell death. Just what I said in all these other ones. And so ATP, again, can help to maintain proper calcium homeostasis, basically keeping calcium outside the cell rather than inside the cell. So that is how creatine can improve function within the brain following a concussion based on all of the problems that occur with a concussion. Um, but if we come down here, they have a nice table that looks at all this in roll. So basically we have the MTBI neuropathology, how creatine helps with that, and what symptoms could be caused by the pathology and then improved by creatine supplementation. So again, membrane depolarization. So you have uh, ionic movement or electrolyte movement back and forth. Creatine helps maintain and restore these, these barriers, which can help with migraine-like symptoms. Um, the calcium influx due to the impaired mitochondria. Again, uh, creatine can help maintain calcium homeostasis. It can help prevent the influx of calcium. These uh, post-concussion symptoms that uh, normally affect cognition can be related there. Impaired mitochondrial function, again, playing that role in calcium homeostasis for creatine, preventing influx of calcium. Um, this can help with the uh, with decreasing the increased vulnerability from second impact syndrome. So if, for instance, a uh, child or an athlete thinks that, oh, they don't have a concussion, they can go back in, it maybe helps to um, it helps to prevent or de creatine supplementation can help decrease the vulnerability. Uh, it's possible. Oxidative stress, same thing. 
and then the other things like glutamate toxicity, lactate accumulation, um, can we do swelling can possibly de decrease with creatine, inflammation can, um, and then altered neurotransmission. So basically altered, um, altered channel affecting. So the NMDA receptors create a channel to then improve cognition. And so again, post-concussion symptoms that involve cognition can be affected. So if we bring this back in, creatine supplementation can be great for prevention and treatment of concussions. The problem is that it takes a while for creatine to get into the brain. So creatine supplementation is best done preemptively, best done before the concussion occurs as a preventive me measure. Generally, most people should be taking about five grams per day, but people that are bigger, okay, so maybe bigger athletes like 200 pounds or more might wanna take six or seven grams per day. Um, then if a concussion does occur, it may be beneficial to take a, a little bit of a loading dose or more so that we can sit, get more into the brain when that concussion happens. If somebody did not take a uh, creatine prior to a concussion, then they for sure be taking a loading dose, maybe um, 10 grams twice a day for uh, 10 grams twice a day for one to two weeks, followed up by just five grams a day after that. So um, again, creatine is great for brain health. Uh, I think again, everybody should be either eating enough meat to get enough creatine in their, in their daily lives or should be taking or supplementing with some creatine um, along with a good healthy exercise and healthy diet can really be beneficial for many populations. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you have any suggestions or future topics, I would love to hear them. Thanks again and have a great day. Stay healthy.